See, I've been training all my life to reach my present day fights. I've been working in the dark just to extend my life. I've been overlooked for years, but You know who I am. Super excited to do this QA. Um, dropped the an Instagram post five hours ago, lunchtime today, and uh, got lots of questions. 30 questions, like seven DMs. So I'm excited to do this and uh, we're gonna see, I'm gonna try to, I don't know if I can do it in one video, I might have to break it out into two just so it's not super long for you guys. But uh, <clears throat> really appreciate everybody asking questions and uh, yeah, let's get going. But uh, I thought it would be super funny if nobody asked any questions and I would just, I don't know, that'd make me be really sad, but you guys love me. Anyways, starting from the top. Southern Tug Hill Snow Riders asks if I like my Southern Tug, Tug Hill hat and t-shirt. I do. I appreciate you guys. And I appreciate what you guys do for the sport over there. So glad to help out any way I can. Uh, da, da, da. Why is it so hard to side hill on the right hand side? I have left hand down, but I'm having trouble with the right. Maybe it's just me. It's definitely not just you. Um, it's, it's everybody. So... Here's the deal, Lane. Um, there's a few. There's a few ideas on why the left hand side's harder than the right hand side. Or what did he ask? Is the right hand or left? The right hand side. So yeah, the right hand side's harder for for pretty much everybody because part of the reason might be the clutches. So you have all that clutch weight rotating on the left hand side, and you have to bring that all the way over instead of it just staying in one place and the rest of your sled moving around it. So that can be part of it. The other thing is your throttle's in a different place. And, you know, we're usually dominant one side, left or right hand, left or right handed. So most people are right handed. So, um, you know, that can also be a reason too. But, you know, I'm left handed. And, and when I was first beginning to side hill and, and, and kind of turn like that, the, the right hand side was harder for me as well. But more practice, just keep pounding away at the right hand side and it, it just makes you a way better rider and you have to be able to do that to, to access all the terrain. Chad Huntington, Chris Huntington, sorry. I thought I read it before, but I didn't. Chris Huntington, why, is, why isn't belt heat more of a common topic? Anybody that rides the axis hard is plagued with overheated belts, just to make marginable, we gear them down. It seems like the manufacturers are so concerned with horsepower. You know, I think, Chris, the, the interesting thing about your question about belt heat um, is, is, you know, are we talking true heat or are we talking just belt life in general? So, you know, I, I run a turbo with big horsepower and I can be really mean to a belt on purpose, but, you know, I understand... I understand that it is it, it can get hot and all this kind of stuff, but you know a stock axis really does have pretty good belt life. Um, I've found you know if some guys have issues if you clutch it differently, all this kind of stuff. There's so much that goes into it, um, and even how you ride can make you harder or easier on belts. So you know one thing they did with the 850 is the way that the motor mounts are. Um, it really helps that engine from torquing and putting a, an incorrect load on the belt, so it, it keeps your belt alignment really well. But, um, you know, you vent your stuff, all that kind of stuff. But I think as a big picture, most riders don't see that big of an issue with overheating of belts. Um, so that, that's just kind of the thing. It's not a massive issue for the majority of riders. So manufacturers don't really look that hard at it. Um, how do I afford my snowmobiles? I work in the summer, do whatever I can. I get a little bit of help, but I'm not getting like, 20 free stolen bills like some people think um yeah i i just work hard and 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 do it however i can and and figure it out and I, I get some help from aftermarket companies so i can put some cool parts on them and make a little bit of money back maybe when i when i sell them but you know i gotta go to the dealership and get my sleds too so it, it's tough but work hard all summer to ride all winter that's the motto Riley asked if I would ever ride in Utah and where I would ride. I have ridden in Utah before. It's been a few years, but uh, if I was going to go back, which I will, I just haven't got out there recently, um, I'd call up some of my guys that I ride with that are locals there and 
they just take me to their spots and I'd go st steal all their good snow. So, um, why did I leave BBA and what am I doing for work? Taylor asks. So I left Chris's at, uh, at BBA, not really for a number of reasons, but you know, there's a lot of different factors in it. One, I, I love home. I love central Oregon so much. So, um, I kind of moved, moved home for one of those reasons. Um, and then also, you know, I think the, the path that I like, uh, I really do enjoy teaching and working with people a lot, but um, I wanted the freedom to kind of do some of my own things and, and chase some other avenues. Um, so, so those are kind of some things that, that a reason that I decided to leave. Um, so now I'm just trying to figure out some stuff of my own, working hard in the summer, doing whatever I can and uh, doing a lot of social stuff on the side for companies and stuff. So all sorts of stuff. I don't even know what I'm doing half the time. So just trying to make it all work and, and put something together. Ooh, this is a good one. Where do I see myself and career in five years? Uh, five years, that would make me 28 only. Mm. So in five years, uh, hopefully I'm still riding super hard and super aggressive and hopefully mm, one of the top guys in the industry. You know, that's the goal, of course. And uh, But also I want, I want to be able to branch out and do some other things, not only in snowmobiling, but power sports as well. I'm working really hard. I'm trying to race Terracross, UTVs. You know, um, I, I want to be more than just an athlete. I want to be be multi-dimensional. So I'm very att attractive to to companies, and I and I love an audience. Um, you know, I I want, I want to work on my personal brand. So and I really appreciate everybody that follows me, and I just want to keep growing and and producing good content for everybody that follows me. So. You know, that's kind of my goal in the next five years. I think technology is only going to make it easier and crazier. So just trying to stay on top of that. Why did I swap to RSI bars and not stay with the Pro Taper? So you probably saw the RSI bars on my sled in Sweden. And really the only reason I had that was just because they were five inch bars and that's what they had over there. So it's not necessarily the brand of bar for me. It's, it's way more the seven inch to five inch. I do run the skins bars a lot on a lot of my sleds, the chromolys or titaniums, um, but it, it's always to get that five inch height. That's what I'm going for. It's way more rider friendly than the, the seven inch height that comes standard on the sleds for me. Um, and I think for a lot of guys as well. What are my thoughts on a 155 versus a 163? Um, and then there's another question about the two six. Oh, that's a uh, that's different. Anyways, so 155 versus uh, 163. The 55 is just a little bit more nimble. You're not gonna feel it a ton. You might feel it a little bit jumping. Um, you'll feel it when you're like, if you want to do re-entries or kind of those flare like pirouettes, the stuff that I like to do a lot. Unless you have turbo, then the fi the 63 is gonna be a lot harder to do that. The positives about the 63 is it holds a side hill way better. Um, so like a really, really steep side hill, it'll stick to it better and you can gain elevation better. So if you just are out there trying to ride the steepest, gnarliest trees, then a 63 is gonna be your sled. If you wanna jump and do re-entries and all that kind of stuff, a 55 is gonna be a little bit better for you. <clears throat> 800 turbo compared to a stock 800 uh, or a stock 850. So you really can't compare a aspirated, a naturally aspirated sled to a turbocharged sled, you know, even if it was a 600 to an 800, um, it, it's just the turbo builds so much horsepower and so much track speed on the top end that it, you can't even compare it. So, um, you know, a, a turbo 800 on 10 pounds of boost is still going to eat a 850 alive no matter what. Um, but you put a tur turbo on an 850 and then it's gonna be a whole nother beast. So really the bottom end is where we're talking um, regardless of turbos, you know. Um, and that 850 is a, an amazing motor and absolutely incredible. I'm really excited to, to really spend some more time on it. How long did it take me to get to where I am and what did I do to get here and any advice? Uh, so I mean, I could spend a lot of time on this question and I've been thinking about even doing a whole, a whole video on it. Uh, really my thoughts about the whole, like probably sponsored world. I think that's what a lot of guys are wanting. I think a lot of my audience is, is, you know, 
probably in their teens, um, high, middle school, high school kids that, that, that have this kind of vision. So how I did what I did in just a little, a quick bit, I started by taking photos, riding a ton. I was riding all the time. I was skipping school to go ride and all this stuff. And luckily my dad supported me and wanted to go ride with me. So he would go ride and, you know, he would take photos of me and I would send them to companies and I would, you know, do whatever I could in the beginning to, to kind of get a foot in the door, whatever it was, 20% off, little deals here or there. And um, the hard part is, is these days, everybody has one of these and everybody has an Instagram account. Instagram account and so everybody can be a professional snowmobiler. So, you know, the biggest thing is if you really want to do it, regardless if it's snow, snowboarding, snowmobiling, dirt biking, it doesn't matter what you want to do. You just have to set yourself apart from other people. Um, you know, why should a company give you anything when they, when they have 15 other people lined up? Like what makes you different than everybody else? So, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that, but that's just kind of how it is. And, um, you know, I started when I was 14, 15. I was like, I'm going to be a professional snowmobiler. I'm 22 years old now, so I've been going at it for a while as a, as a young kid, and now I'm really starting to kind of get into, you know, play with the big boys a little bit more. So, so it's an ever-changing landscape, and it's really tough. It's a full-time job, so if you want it, you can do it, and I, I never want to discourage anybody, but it is work, and uh, it's possible, though, so... Um, what's my biggest pet peeve I notice on other people's sled setups? Example, obnoxious high rises, high risers. Yes, that's, that is, that's part of the answer. When people have their handlebars up here, oh my God, it's so annoying. And, but we're getting less and less of that, you know, we finally got away from that early 2000s junk that, that guys were doing. So they're finally getting away from it. And, uh, now I see a lot of guys with their throttle turned down and their brake turned up so there it pushes your wrist down it really it's really uncomfortable and really weird to ride standing up so i always like my brake down and my throttle up and it, that keeps my elbows up and a way better riding position so i see that all the time and it annoys the heck out of me one trick to better riding keep those eyes up the further ahead you can look the better off you'll be and it, does, it doesn't matter if you're riding a bicycle, a motorcycle, a snowmobile, driving a car, all that kind of stuff. The further ahead you can look, the more time your body has to, uh, uh, you know, adjust and anticipate what's coming at you. So those eyes are everything. And that, that's what that's what we preached at BBA. Barant still preaches it. That's what Dan Adams preaches. That's what Sane preaches. That's what all these riding clinic guys preaches. Keep your eyes up. You have to be able to look to where, where you want to go. If you look down, you're going to go down. Uh, that was part one of the Q and A, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, too many questions, too long of answers. To I wanted to break it up in two pieces for you guys. So if you enjoyed that, head over, watch part two, and uh, tell me what you guys think. And uh, I really appreciate it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. See ya.